Today we're going to take a look at this Celebrite, Celebrit, I'm going to call it Celebrite, I don't know why, I don't know if that's the right name, but whatever, mobile synchronization device. So it comes in this kind of funky box, or comes in this funky bag with all these little Velcro strips, and these things hold all these cables here. So you can have a whole strip of them. More on these in a bit. But there's space for a whole bunch of them and they give you some Velcro and stuff to add more. So on the inside of this bag, we have a power adapter and the UME24 from Celebrite. The device itself is this kind of rather large handheld unit. And the idea behind this thing is that you power this on, you tell it what your source phone and your destination phone are. Let's say this guy and this guy. And this would be used by a dealer or, you know, like an AT&T store or whatever that you're bought purchasing a new phone and you need to get your data from one phone to another. And the idea is you would hook up the correct cable to this device and the correct cable to this device. And then you go through the menu, tell it what kind of um, phones you have, and then just hit go. And it will send all the contacts, data, that kind of stuff over to the other phone. Now, this particular one, all it can do is transfer from one phone to another. That, that's all it can do. It can store stuff onto a SIM card as well but that's functionally the same thing. You're just transferring stuff over. This does not do anything fancy like break into phones. There is, however, a product from the same company that does break into phones. It removes the passcodes on the phone and then can extract the data for forensic purposes. Now, I actually have one of these and it will be in an upcoming video. So, you know, subscribe, that whole thing. But, um, that one is used by law enforcement agencies. You may have heard of this company from the, the shooting where the FBI was trying to get into the iPhone and then they eventually did. And allegedly it was this company that did it. Now, um, this same company, like I said, makes these forensic ones and they are supposedly harder to get and they're very expensive. These things are pretty expensive too, but um, I picked one up on eBay for, I think it was under a hundred bucks. Anyway, um, all their stuff is made in Israel, of all places. And uh, yeah, like I said, this is the UME24. And let me just power this guy on. I'm not going to do an actual copy because, you know, what's the point? It just, it just copies things. It's not interesting at all, really. Anyway, what you would do is you'd select a source. So as you can see, it just lets you list lots of uh, various phones and like uh, a few smartphones. <laughs> There's nothing from Apple, which is kind of funny, but uh, Microsoft OS, oh, pocket PCs, okay, yeah, so it's just older stuff, it's not uh, Windows Mobile, and there's supposed to be uh, trios and stuff, or trio, 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 whatever, um, yeah, so basically all this thing can do is copy from A to B, and you would select, let's say, a Samsung GSM phone, and then you get the specific model, and let's say it's this one, and you want to copy the data from the phone and the SIM, and you want to target, let's say the same, same model. So it's telling me for the left side, get cable 97, and for the right side, get cable 97, because I said it's the same one. Uh, it says transfers 1453, so that might be how many total transfers this particular unit has done. And what you would do is you'd look through your big pile of cables for the correct number. In this case, it's uh, 12. And this looks like it's for uh, a Nokia. So uh, you'd plug this in to the source, plug it into the phone. It's not the right cable, but you get the idea. And then you do the same thing for the other side. Now, on this side, we have two source cables or connectors. These are just RJ45s. From what I can tell, these are serial data only for older phones. And then there's also a USB port. There's some connectors for modern, or some cables for modern uh, phones. Let's see, there's a Nokia number nine, number 74. 
this one uses a straight USB cable. So uh, they have both of these mirrored on each side for the source and target. There's the 12 volt, uh, I think it's 1.2 amps in. It's a big linear transformer. Actually, I just realized it says Netgear on it. I don't know if this was original. I, I, I'm, you know, like I, I, it came with the one I bought, but I don't know if they, they got this originally. Maybe they outsourced it or something. I don't know. And uh, there's an infrared port. I think this is for transferring to cam. Um, I keep saying cameras, phones that have uh, no serial, external serial interface, just through uh, IRDA or some proprietary protocol. And down here is a full-size SIM reader. Remember, a SIM card is the size of a smart card or a credit card, but uh, usually they have a, a subset of that where you break off the outer shell. Uh, now we have even smaller. We have nano SIMs and all that stuff. A little gap for uh, the beeper, I think. And I'm not sure what hooks up to the external connector. It's probably for a printer like a serial printer so you can record uh, you know, logs of everything and verify stuff. And then there's a serial connection to the PC. This particular one, I don't have the software for, so uh, we can't really do anything with that, but uh, we can open it up. But before we get to that, let's take a look at the cables, of which I have a few. I'm not gonna go through all of these, but there are a couple interesting ways uh, manufacturers have made interfaces to their phones over the years. Cause we're used to having like a USB port on the bottom, but a lot of phones have just like weird connectors or even uh, no connector at all because they use, does this phone open? Maybe I should get this one. Um, yeah, like this one has a USB port. So we're used to that, but there's a lot of phones that have no connector at all and they just have pads on the board so what they have is a uh, unit like this is just dummy battery so you take the battery out and put this into it and it makes contact and supplies power but it also has pins to to uh, interface to the device using serial data so it's a pretty interesting arrangement of um, interfaces you see you can see another one here which uses uh, some little uh, pogo pins and that must supply power as well because there's no other connections in this this clips inside the inside the phone and like you get these like kind of fancy multi-way connectors with like push releases and stuff like that and that's pretty much it for kind of like unique ones there are a couple interface cables that you might recognize such as a USB cable, I think this is number 100, yeah. I noticed that the um, higher numbers are the USB ones, so I guess they've been sequentially adding different products to it. So, uh, you know, newer ones would have USB, so they'd be higher numbers. And uh, yeah, they're pretty much all the same. They're just variants on the same kind of idea. They're either a, a little micro connector or they're uh, some kind of weird dummy battery. I did find this one, it's a little mini jack. And it looks like it screws into the side of the phone. What is this even for? Number 59. I don't know. Uh, from what I can tell, there's no like cross-reference to figure out what what cable goes to what without actually selecting the, the phone first. And like I said earlier, there's uh, there's foam on the, or sorry, uh, Velcro on these so you can just stick them to those boards. Okay five self-tapping screws later and we're in and the back has nothing on it just has the little ir window and we got a main board here with two ribbon cables i'm not going to take apart the rest of this thing it's just the display which was manufactured in 2005 by intech and it's just a graphical I guess, no, it's not graphical, it's character LCD. And uh, yeah, standard array for the little rubber button. As you saw earlier, there's not many controls on it. It's just power, F123 and some arrow keys, really uh, basic interface. Quite a lot of stuff on this board. Uh, the main microcontroller is a Philips P89C669, which is an 80C51 based 8-bit microcontroller. 96K of flash, 2K of RAM, pretty basic. It has two UARTs 
which I doubt are actually interfacing to anything other than probably just the auxiliary and PC interface. I don't uh, expect them to be interfacing with the phones at all, despite many phones using serial. Uh, they have this Max uh, CPLD here, which is probably doing all the uh, actual interfacing to the, the uh, phones. It would make sense because it can reconfigure uh, all its outputs based on which uh, pins are being used in the cable and all sorts of stuff and the different speeds and timings and who knows what else. Uh, this is an EPM 3128, which is a 2.5K gates. There's also four megs of flash. This seems to be wired to both things. So this probably contains like a master list of all the current um, phones that this thing supports. And it also contains all the information needed by the CPLD to reset itself into whatever configuration it needs. There's also four meg bits of uh, SRAM. It's kind of slow, it's 70 nanoseconds. It seems a little slow for SRAM, but uh, yeah, that's probably just buffering stuff. And uh, power supply in this section is just taking the 12 volts down to five volts. Looks like there's another power supply over here. This is probably providing voltages for the smart card reader, which is, pr or SIM reader, I should say, which probably runs at like three volts or something, but it may need like a programming voltage, I'm not sure. So uh, this thing is just a big physical connector. You can actually see the pads for the SIM. This is what uh, a full SIM card looks like. You can see that it looks like a regular SIM and you break it out. This is actually from the forensic version of it. And you can tell because it says evidence number, case number, officer, all that stuff for um, evidence collection. So you would you could burn stuff onto this uh, as part of your investigation. And it just inserts and reads it and it's just a manual uh, eject, you can pull back out. You can copy stuff onto it. I believe you can actually copy stuff from it as well. This corner has this stuff for the IRDA. Looks like there's just a diode and a big resistor. The back has nothing but passive devices on it, but you can also see that it is a six layer board. The rest of the board is pretty much just support chips and you know filtering and latches and all that kind of stuff. We've got a Cypress chip here, which is probably just a USB controller. It's handling both of these, there's also a 12 megahertz clock next to it, which leads me to believe that it is USB. And that is about it. There's just the interface for the LCD, the buzzer, and this is the interface for the keypad. This one looks like it's tied into the microcontroller. So that's probably a programming header for most likely the microcontroller, but it could also be for the flash. This thing, I'm going to just pop back on eBay because I don't really have any use for the duplicating function. Uh, I'm probably gonna keep the one that can break into phones because that one's a little more interesting. And it also, uh, it's kind of cool to be able to get into phones that you buy on eBay because it turns out cell phones are super cheap on eBay when they're old models. You can just get whole piles of them for like 10 bucks. So it's kind of funny to, uh, to get a whole bunch of them. And it, it, it's really neat to, um, have it have to tell you that there's a passcode on it and you just plug it in and two seconds later, it tells you what the passcode is. It's really cool. But, uh, the, um, the, the hacking one's a lot more interesting than this one. So I'm just going to throw this back on eBay after I, uh, I'm going to go through all the cables and make sure that I have the cables on the hacking one as opposed to uh, this one. I'd much rather have a full set on the forensic one and just sell whatever is left over with this one.